Okay, hello everyone, and I am a PhD research scientist, and uh, so I like science and technology, and I also like uh, things about the Bible and Scripture. And I was reading recently an article titled Macroscopic Heat Release in a Molecular Solar Thermal Energy Storage System. And this is related to the idea of a renewable energy storage. And this is a fascinating topic. I find this very fascinating. One that is of great importance for our future energy needs. And it is related to the idea of chemically storing sensible heat in the transformation of one kind of material to another. Now, in this research, scientists are said to have made a breakthrough in renewables for energy storage of a solar thermal fuel that is claimed to be capable of storing the, the sun's energy for up to 18 years. And this is important as a method for storing thermal energy, an alternative to batteries and heating elements, as an example. And, and this concept uses a thermal fluid that is capable of holding the sun's energy for long periods of time. And this thermal energy can then be extracted on demand. This type of energy storage is significant in the application of heating residential and commercial homes or offices. Now, a thermal fluid is composed of the typical types of atoms, you know, for example, for a organic molecule, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. The molecule of choice in this study is norbornadine, and the uh, the molecular formula is C7H8. The energy storage mechanism occurs by opposing or exposing the norbornadine to sunlight. And some of the bonds between the atoms are rearranged to form a molecule called quadracyclane, which is occurring here. What, what's occurring here is a chemical conversion into a different molecular structure by a process known as isomerization. Now, in chemistry, isomerization is a process by which one molecule is transformed into another molecule, which is exactly the same number of atoms. But the atoms have a different arrangement. For example, ABC goes to a BAC type molecule where the, the, the atoms are rearranged or the functional groups are rearranged into something that's called an isomer or, or something like that. The transformed or um, what I, I call energized molecule is stable with strong chemical bonds, meaning that these newly formed bonds form a stable structure. And this is the key to storing energy for what the researchers claim 18 years, according to uh, their paper. Now, the extraction of the energy is achieved by passing the fluid over a catalyst, which gen then changes the molecule from the quadracyclane back to the nor norbordiene structure, which releases heat. And so this is an exothermic re reaction. And th this exothermic reaction releases 63 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit of sensible heat. And this means that a room that is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the fluid we heat up to 183 degrees Fahrenheit. And so this amount of heat is sufficient to heat a home or a commercial building. And the thermal fuel requires no outside input beyond the sun and can operate in a closed loop system. Now, when studying this this uh, the scientific research, you know, I, I I thought this was a fantastic example that that shows us that this single source, the sunlight, is having a transformational influence upon an organic chemical that can then be used in a very practical way. So, the question is, can you think of another process that occurs in a similar fashion according to the scriptures? You know, what do you think? Now, the Torah describes the covenant of the Lord God Almighty that he has made with those who believe in him in the following way. So we'll look at Exodus chapter 34, verse 10. It says, And he said, Behold, I am making a covenant. Before, before all your people I will do marvels such as have not been created in all the earth or in any nation, and all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Okay, so in Parashat Kitisa, 
we read in Exodus 34, verse 10, the Lord God Almighty saying to the children of Israel that he is making a covenant with the people that he and that he will do great marvels and he will do such things that no one has seen before on all, in all the earth. The Lord is not just making a promise of the covenant. He's also telling Israel that they are unique and that he is going to do an awesome thing in their lives. And this is a transformational promise the Lord is seeking to do in our lives. And while studying the Torah, it's possible to find a lot of prophetic meaning that describes the work and the plan of our Father in heaven and what he is revealing to his people. Now the scriptures direct our attention to his Messiah in the sacrificial system. And note that the sacrificial system is in and of itself a transformational process where the animal is laid down upon the altar and burned and the blood and the fat and the meat are all transformed into smoke and ashes. So the important point is that there are factors that influence our understanding of the messianic hope that is revealed to, to us in the Torah and also in the prophets and the writings sections of the Tanakh. Now, the key verses in the Torah that explain to us what the Lord God Almighty is seeking to do in our lives is found here in Parashat Kitisa, in Leviticus 34, verse 10. And, and this might be the reason why this portion of Scripture is used for the reading for Sukkot. Now, the Lord has plans to do something miraculous that has never been seen before. And the Lord singles us, us out as his beloved people through whom he is going to perform these miracles. Now, the Apostle Paul understood this concept found in the Torah and spoke of the Lord God doing something miraculous in our lives for those who believe in God's Messiah, Yeshua, in the following way. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 to chapter 6, verse 2, it says, For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way. We do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come, and this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the mystery of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. And we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, In the time of my Father I heard you, and in a day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Okay, so that, that was that was from first, or Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12 to chapter 6, verse 2. And so Paul connects the sacrificial system, one giving up his life for another, to a this transformational process that occur, occurs being in the Messiah. The, the sacrifice of Yeshua resulted in our reconciliation to our Father in heaven. And, and Paul quotes from Isaiah 49 verse 8, in the covenant of God connecting our salvation both to the Messiah, Yeshua, and to the pattern that is laid out in the Torah as in God dwelling in our midst. Now the point about the scientific research is how the sunlight shines and the transformation that occurs in this organic molecule into a different form. You know, there there is this it is it is putting energy into this molecule by the in the by the uh the isomerization of this molecule to another form. So the light is essentially empowering the molecule for a, a future use to give us life-sustaining heat that may be used when it is very cold outside. And in a similar way, believing upon the Messiah, Yeshua, the Lord God sends his light, his spirit, to dwell in our lives, literally transforming us into something new. You know, as it says in Second Corinthians 5.17, it says, Note, this is how the author, and note how this is also how the author of Hebrews chapter 1 speaks of Yeshua being the light and the wisdom of God. So this transformational process 
does not just empower us to live our lives according to his word, you know, according to the meets vote, according to commands, but also provides us with a powerful testimony of God and his, his Messiah working in our lives. And this is a very, very significant. And we can understand why based upon what we read in the book of Revelation. In Revelation 12, verse 17, it says, So the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. In Revelation 14, verse 12, it says, Here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. And then in Revelation 22, 14, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Okay, so what we find here in Revelation 12, Revelation 14, chapter 14 and chapter 22, we see the description of God's people as those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. We're told in Revelation 12 or 17 that when the evil one goes out on a rampage, to execute vengeance upon God by attacking God's people, he does so by attacking God's people who have faith in Yeshua and keep God's commandments, keep his meets vote. And there's a very real reason why Satan is so furious with those who honor God by obeying all that God commands. And this, this is connected to this transformational process of God working in our lives to have the desire to obey his word. In Revelation 14, we see that the wicked are those who worship the beast and his image and receive his mark. Obviously, they are not those who are keeping the commandments of God because they worship a false God. And only those who keep the commandments of God and have faith in Yeshua the Messiah and our Father in heaven will be saved because the Lord God is actively working in our lives for his glory. And we read in Revelation 22, 14, that we're told that only those who obey his commands will have the right to the tree of life. And this is similar to the transformational process that we see in this, this chemical process described in the research, that there is this exothermic release of energy that would not occur if the transformation had not first taken place. In our excitement for God's word, going out into all the world to share the gospel message, this will not take place if we first do not have this transformational process in our lives. The Lord God Almighty working in our lives, indwelling us by His Holy Spirit, transforming us into something new. And it is only then that we become this new creation, this new thing that we can be used for His purposes. And, and this is what it means for faith to have faith in our relationship with God, what, what faith and relationship with God is all about. And we can, if we consider all of these things in a midrashic sense, that we can see how this too is a catalytic transformational process where the Lord God changes us and then uses us for His glory. And what a fantastic thing that is. And so... That's what I had to, that that's what I learned from um just reading this this uh fascinating research in energy storage and so if you have any comments on this uh, I would love to hear from it hear from you uh, you can comment on the YouTube channel or you can send me an email you can find that at the website montsadi.com thank you for listening Bye.